So this is a well-known Australian online retailer. I've changed their name to protect quite sensitive business information, but this is a real program that happened around their loyalty program. Now, let me give you a bit of background. What prompted this entire exercise was a, the first set of analytics where what we did is we had a look at, they had a suspicion that they were losing a lot of money around discounts that people hadn't earned. So to give you a bit of background, the loyalty program has uh, about four different levels and depending on the level, you need to maintain a minimum spend to maintain that level. Unfortunately, they hadn't been enforcing this over about two or three years. So what was happening is a lot of people were getting discounts that they hadn't actually earned. So the first set of analytics that we did was to look at how much money are they actually using on a monthly basis. And this was an interesting one because when I talked to the marketing manager there, we thought, oh, maybe it's two to three grand a month and it's not really something urgent. The funny thing is the CEO had a, he had an, he had a feeling, had intuition. He, said, he thought we we're actually losing a lot more money. So when we did the first set of analytics, we actually found that they were losing 50k a month. So suddenly this project became absolute top priority. Now the problem was they had a lot of discussion about the loyalty level. So if they were going to enforce these loyalty levels, they also wanted to essentially refresh them because it hadn't been changed in a while. The marketing manager actually took me aside and said, look, she'd been there four months and she'd already attended five meetings about loyalty levels. The meetings were just people stating their opinions, different people in operations, in marketing and in management, essentially saying, look, I feel feel like it should be this or it should be that. And the result was total inaction. They hadn't changed it in two years because no one could agree on what it should be. Now the other thing is, when they realized that they were losing this much money, they were also concerned that if they were going to enforce a rollback, that they would get a massive customer backlash. And, and that's something they were very concerned about and it had stopped them uh, in the past from doing anything about it. So that is the background. That's the kind of challenges that we went into for this particular program. And of course, the main tool we used was data mining and, and big data. So it's all around that to solve some of the problems that we had. So I'm going to take you through the kind of process we went through. So the first thing was to look at the loyalty levels that they had. Essentially, they had four different levels, which are here, with a discount level. So 20, 15, and 10 are the discounts that you receive at each level. Now, these had evolved over time. I couldn't get anyone to, to tell me why they'd actually chosen these values. So my theory was that these current levels didn't actually gel with reality at all. And of course, no one could prove it or disprove it because no one had ever done any kind of analysis. So the first question that we asked was what loyalty levels should be used? And the way we answered that was using a data mining technique called clustering. So that's just a nice word to remember if you're ever talking to someone about doing this kind of analytics. Now, what is clustering? Clustering is where essentially you take raw data so imagine we're plotting the annual spending of a particular person in the VIP program or the loyalty program and we essentially want to group those together. In clustering, what we do is we pick out a number of groups and it will show us visually where these different data points match. So what you're seeing is like four different circles where the data is being grouped together. How do we actually apply that? What we did was we got the data from the CRM on the annual spending for everyone in the loyalty program and then we asked the data scientists to put it into four clusters, four natural groupings of spending. And this is what we got. The problem with this is that we can see the entire range of the cluster, but we can't see where the spending is concentrated. So for example, in the fourth cluster, this is people spending per year, anywhere from 10000 to roughly $1,000. But we don't get an indication of where is that concentrated? Is it at the top? Is it at the bottom? Is it at the middle? That was the next challenge. What do we do with these clusters so that they're more useful for a marketer? And let me take you back to a bit of high school mathematics. Uh, let's talk about average. I think everyone has a good grasp of average. Uh, standard deviation is relatively simple. It's it's, you don't really need to understand too much about it. It's all about the concentration of data. So what we want to do is we want to find where most of the data is concentrated, where most of the values are concentrated. And we're here we're talking about spending. And that's all you need to know. Just remember that standard deviation is all about concentration of data. 
And what I asked the data scientists to do for these clusters was, can you apply standard deviation to the clusters so that we actually get an idea of where is the spending concentrated instead of just having these bars that really don't mean anything to me as a marketer. And the great thing is they were then able to give us what is the average and the standard deviation. And this is the results we came up with. The darker the color, the more people are spending at that level. So if we take, for example, cluster three, the entire range is the bar. So there's a bar, like that little thin line, that is the entire range. But where the concentration of spending on a yearly basis occurs is between $600 and $400. And the average is in the middle where it's darkest. So now suddenly we can see quite clearly that there are four clusters, natural clusters of people in the loyalty program and where the spending is concentrated for each particular cluster. So now this becomes more useful from a marketing perspective. What we then did was overlay the current loyalty levels on top of the spending clusters. The first thing we noticed straight away was these levels have no relation to the actual real spending. They're just kind of haphazardly overlaid over here. It doesn't really gel with what's happening in the real world. We wanted to change that. So what we did was we said, okay, why don't we move those lines to the top of each of the clusters? Rather than just having these lines where they are, we move them to the top of each cluster and the reason we went for this is what we call the exclusive model. It's where there's less discounts because of the cost, because if you put it above where the average spending is occurring, then you're actually incurring less discounts. And that everyone in the different levels has something to aspire to because usually the level is above where they're at. So the great thing about having done this exercise with the client is essentially within 20 minutes, what they couldn't agree on for two years, they were able to agree that, okay, these were the new loyalty levels. And operations marketing and the CEO were all able to say, okay, this is what we're going to do. And that was a massive release for the marketing manager because this had been going on for two years, debating the loyalty levels and nothing had ever been done.